So I got a great question on one of my videos about taking things too personally, and I thought it deserved its own video. So the person posted that she's curious about what role does racism play in the topic of taking things too personally. And she elaborated, if you feel someone's being rude to you, how do you know if you're just taking it personally or if you're being discriminated against? So great question. And I want to address this from the point of view of racism, sexism, ableism, really anything people are prejudging you for. They see you and they have some automatic assumptions. So having said that, that definition right there means it's not about you. That's the problem with racism, right? That's the problem with being discriminated against based on your accent, how you speak, how you look, the color of your skin, the gender you are, whether you exhibit gender norms, right? All of these outward manifestations that people judge you on have nothing to do with you. So this does not mean that they're not upsetting. They are. This does not mean that you should not object to them. You, yes, right? I mean, you have to determine, obviously, every situation is different. You're not always safe to object right then and there. But what we can do about a major societal problem is different than taking it personally. And I believe our responses can be much more skillful if we're not taking it personally, right? So one trick played when you're discriminated against is that the person does sort of make it about you, but it's their own projections. It's their own ignorance. And in the worst case, it's their own hatred, right? But it is truly about them. So I want to share an experience when I was on Wall Street, my first career, and this was probably early 90s, and I was on a hiring team for analysts. Now, analysts is a very quantitative position. They work with numbers, spreadsheets, computer modeling, and there were probably 10 people on the committee, maybe 12, and probably at least six or seven of us would interview each candidate, and then we would meet as a group to discuss the person. So we were discussing this one candidate who happened to be female, and she had long curly hair. She was very attractive, presented in a very feminine way. Yet she'd also gone to the Bronx High School of Science and gotten straight A's. Her SAT scores, her GMAT scores for business school were incredibly high in the quantitative areas. And we're sitting around the table talking about the candidate and two of the guys are talking about how she's not quantitative enough. And I'm literally listening to them in shock. And so I waited for a pause in the conversation and I said, is her hair too long and curly for her to be quantitative? And everybody got really, really, really quiet. I was like, because let's take a look at her scores. Let's take a look at her grades. There's nothing here that indicates she's not quantitative. So maybe her hair is just too long. Well, we hired her. She was great. She did great. But that kind of, we call that now unconscious bias, that had nothing to do with the candidates. That was a projection of what these guys thought a quantitative analyst should look like if female. Like, let's put glasses on her, really short hair, put her in a suit, right? Huh? Anyway, <laughs> this happens all the time and it is a problem. But if somebody makes a discriminatory comment towards us or treats us in a discriminatory way and we take it as if it's personal, as if it truly has something to do with me, then we probably don't react skillfully. We probably don't respond in the way that's best for us long term, right? Now, I'm not saying what that response should be. I want to be really clear on this because I know this topic can generate a lot of concern and people can get very reactive, right? A proper response might be walking away. A proper response might be saying something. Now, the situation I shared, obviously, I wasn't the one being discriminated against, but there were not a lot of women on the hiring committee. So I was sort of more in tune with these issues and I was able to express it in a no-nonsense way that got my point across, but didn't attack them. I didn't jump at them, right? That response worked for that situation. But again, I wasn't the one being attacked, so it was a little bit easier. But knowing deep down that this is not about anything that's wrong with you, really. 
and people discriminate against various ethnic groups and various races because of ignorance, fear, unfortunately, hatred. But hatred, usually, I think of that as really being threatened, right? There's something really threatening. A transgender person can be super threatening to somebody who has squashed any of those feelings or emotions that are supposed to be the other genders, right? So it's that own kind of self-hatred that comes out, not in any way excusing it, and everything we can do to help our society move forward to truly allow people to express who they are and to reach their full potential no matter what. And just one more thing I just want to emphasize, because I want to make sure that this is such a complicated topic, it's big, and I understand, like, I can't possibly cover all of it. But when we take something personally, we're reacting from a point of view of something's wrong with me. So we are taking on what the racist, sexist person or the bully is saying about us in some way. We are giving the words too much importance. That's what taking it personally is about. So not taking it personally can allow you to respond in a way where you can stand up to this much more effectively. Again, in the right ways, in the right situations. Very complicated. Hope this was helpful. Let me know. I'll see you guys later.